We'll start today with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on our agenda for today is a review of the minutes from our October 11th um, board meeting. Any questions, notes, comments from the board? I didn't see any. Nope. Okay. Any oh. questions since Mr. Winkler was not <laughs> here at the time? No, it looks good to me. Okay. I'll move to approve. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. The minutes from the October 11th meeting are approved. And moving on to our discussion and review today, the first item on our agenda is the Rosewick Corner Development 7-Eleven. If anybody is present, like to come forward. Introduce yourselves, and then we'll have a presentation by town. Uh, excuse me. Good, good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. My name is Matthew Tedesco. With the law firm McNamee in Greenbelt, Maryland, on behalf of uh, the applicant. And with me this morning, we have Mr. Eric Bailey and Ms. Bree Brianne Wilson from 7 Eleven. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, with that, I will take it away. Uh, so, for the record, Janine Harrington, Director of Planning for the Town of La Plata. So, this is a proposal for the new construction of a gas station at the Rosewood Corner development. Uh, as we've seen in the past, we've had the Aldi. A grocery store. We had a um, a building with two or three tenant spaces. That was a shell building when it came before the design review board that has since been occupied with a medical office and an emergency vet office. We also had the apartment complex uh, for the 193 apartments, um, all three of which have been approved by the design review board. And as a theme, the design review board requested that there are similar elements, colors, styles, different things to kind of tie the site together. Uh, so as they proposed the 7-Eleven gas station today, you will see that there are several concepts that are carrying over, including brick, some of the colors. Um, and I do have examples from the Aldi grocery store, and I think Kelly can pull up the shell building if you guys want to see some of those examples as we uh, move forward. But the construction is of a one-story convenience, uh, convenience store with gas station pumps. Uh, they will have signage on the gas station pumps as well as on the building. Um, they have a of build materials to create uh, visual just the site. Uh, they will have uh, Storefront windows along the that's going to be facing Roswick Road. The rear of the building is going to be facing the internal right of way, um, and that also faces the residential apartments to the back. Um, and as far as staff has done the review, they do meet all of the minimum requirements for the design guidelines. The only stipulation that I posted is a comment about recommending breaking the rear facades facing elevations, so it will apartments. The applicant did provide a revised rendering, which I um, gave you a copy of that um, in hard copy, and we can also bring that up if we need to for the for everyone to see. Uh, they did add an additional design element, which I will allow them to explain what they did um, and provide clarification that they might have. Microphone Jenga. <laughs> um, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have of staff, or I'd like to turn it over to the applicant to explain their property or their proposal in detail. Okay. Yeah, we're good with that. Um, again, for the record, Matthew Tedesco on behalf of the applicant. Um, I did neglect, and I apologize in my introductions uh, to mention that we do have our architect, County Yuri, for um states online she's on attending virtually with us this morning so if there's any specific detail questions with respect to the architecture um john is available virtually as well um i want to thank um, janine for her presentation as well as her review of this application we've been working with the town for many 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 years on this development um, as janine mentioned um, the aldi is open and, and 
quite successful. We have uh, recently opened the veterinary uh, business uh, in the commercial building, and soon that will be occupied by a medical office um, to, to finish out that building. There remains one undeveloped pad, no prospective users for that at this time. And then obviously um, we mentioned the apartment building, a multifamily building that is should hopefully deliver um, later this year. Um, with that, we turned our attention to this particular pad uh, site location, all of which have, has always been contemplated to be used as a gas station throughout the many years of this uh, application. Um, going back to 2021, the Planning Commission approved a major site plan uh, for the development that included this use uh, and development for this particular parcel. And then in December of December 7, 2021, an amendment was made to facilitate the multifamily that is uh, nearing completion. As far as this particular use at this location, we did uh, obtain a special exception approval uh, at the end of last year. That hearing was heard by the Board of Appeals for the town on December on October 3rd, and that decision was approved on December 5th. So the use uh, is approved for this location. And at that time, all the all the use requirements were vetted and discussed related to the special exception criteria and requirements. So fast forward to today, we're before you on the uh, architectural design as it relates to the building. And as Jeanine mentioned, we have tried to incorporate common themes related to this to the overall center for consistency um, to maintain and enhance the integrity and quality of the uh, commercial highway corridor um, as part of that process facilitating striving striving to ensure aesthetic uh, compatibility uh, throughout the development um, we did receive uh, Ms. Harrington's comment with respect to the southern elevation which is the rear side of the building although it's a little misleading in the sense that we do have a door uh, accessing the rear of the building, primarily for pedestrian traffic associated with the residential component of the project. And so we do have signage above that door for those pedestrian um, residents and uh, customers. Uh, but, but because that side of the building faced the, the multifamily, uh, Ms. Harrington and we agreed, thought that it was appropriate to revise that elevation to include more break a uh, break of material. And you can see on what was handed out just this morning, we've provided, I don't know the exact dimensions, um, can I maybe able to correct me, but it's about four or four and a half feet of a brick uh, feature along the base, along with a, uh, a cap to separate that from the EFIS material that makes up the rest of the building. So we felt that that was very responsive to not only the staff's comment, but also in keeping with the overall architectural design and facade of the building, as well as adding more brick to the building um, aesthetically uh, ties it with the other development on the site. So with that, unless um, Kiana has anything that she would like to add or there's any questions, we would uh, respectfully request uh, the board's approval um, of this, um, um, of the architecture and, and this project so we can move forward hopefully to complete uh, this portion in this phase of the development. So with that, we thank you so much for your time and we're happy to answer any questions. I do have one thing I wanted to point out mm -hmm. since we have the, I'm gonna do the microphone here. <laughs> um, I pulled up the overall site plan that was done from the previous submission. So the Aldi grocery store is here. This was the submission for the um, office building. The convenience store and, and gas pumps are located right here. The residential apartments are in the back. And then they have the pad site up here that's vacant. Um, and one thing I did want to point out, so the rear facade that I mentioned is facing the residential apartments. And I did want to note that there is going to be landscaping here, correct? So that's another element that I wanted to make sure I pointed out that it's not direct, you know, just a back of a building. Um, there will be landscaping there as well. I appreciate the... Uh access the, the rear access for your customers from the apartments um, i don't have any i have a question about the canopy because we don't have any visuals as to what the canopy is going to look like i just want to make sure it's not going to be you know neon green <laughs> um and the the other question i have is about the common sign plan in the one section of the common sign plan, it states that under um, section E number two, it says location of each sign on the building. 
It says each tenant's allowed to have signs located on the building facade on the, either the front side or rear of the building and or in the storefront. Um, this signage on this building states that there shows that there's two, one front and one back. But later in that same paragraph, it says each tenant will be allowed to have two main sign IDs. So I don't know if we need, maybe it's just my, I don't know, it's confusing to me. If I were to read it, be like, okay, I only get one sign, but at the same time, I can have two sign IDs. So I don't know if there needs to be um, further clarification of that or fixing of those. Um, I had that same confusion, okay. yeah. <laughs> Um, those were my two questions. I don't have it in front of me. What what was the? Um, it's section E number two, location of each sign on the building. One says that they're allowed one, and then the other one that later in the same paragraph it says you're allowed to have two. So that may be in reference, I'll have to double check. It may okay. be in reference to the town code. Okay. If you're on a corner lot, which technically this is on a corner lot, yeah. it would be allowed to. Okay. So that may be what that's referring to. Okay. So that would be something that staff would have to review as part of the sign permit in uh, in accordance with the common okay. sign plan. Just Agreed. I had that. Same. I just was like, okay, tell me I have one, but then yeah. I also have two. Yeah. And then just the, I just want to make sure that the canopy, the fuel canopy colors are going to be in coordination to what the rest of the building is or because we don't have any, there weren't any pictures. Um, yeah, in your backup, there is a picture. Unfortunately, it's not colored, but okay. I can, yeah, I'm, looking at, <laughs> I'm looking at a colored one and um, we can certainly uh, provide that. But the colors uh, are consistent with the 7-Eleven branding and logo. Okay. So they're predominantly the, the, I'll call it the red kind of orange and green banding around mm -hmm. the canopy with just the 7-Eleven sign at one end. Okay. And that'll be illuminated. The, the, not the whole band, yeah, just the okay. signage, right. if, okay. if, I, if I recall correctly. There's illumination in the canopy itself. Okay. Yeah. Then yes, it would be illuminated. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Which is typical. I frequent 7-Eleven a yes. lot. Yes. <laughs> David's comments. He didn't have anything against. No. No questions about 7-Eleven. So. Um, one of the questions I had, and I'm glad to see that in the revised, was the brick on the back, just because a, a it is a dual sided, if you will, um, entrance, um, and nobody wants to look at the back of a, of a concrete um, <laughs> building. So, so breaking that up with the brick, I think, is a. a is something that I would would have pushed for or would have requested nonetheless. So I'm glad to see you do that. Um, you said the canopy is going to be illuminated. The the banding itself is illuminated. Yes, yeah, sorry. The, so the the 7-Eleven logo, which if you see on your screen there, um, that's illuminated uh, internally illuminated and then the the, okay. the banding. So it's all part of the logo, the theme of, okay. of it for advertisement and um sure and also the obviously illuminating down on the pumps themselves for safety and security mm -hmm. yeah sure. and we have a dumpster enclosure as well correct yes okay it's gonna be it, i could see it but difference. okay and that's a shared dumpster correct no, it's gonna have its own sure. Okay. Oh yes, they're right next to each other, and they're going to be built with the same materials and yeah. colors that we saw before. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was the that was the dumpster for the other building that they would be using, but okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? With the um, XT or the um, entrance facing the apartments, will that be well secured with lights and, and things? Y yes, there's um, there's wall packs on the back of that building as well. There's a canopy above that door okay. as well. Yes, okay. I okay. And there is site lighting yeah. uh, for the parking lot as well. Good.
We have a motion. Oh, <laughs> that's OK. Um, make a motion that we approve um, back to the Rosewick Corner Development Project DRB-001-2024. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right. This project has been approved um, as it was presented to us today. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, James. Next item on our agenda for today is the uh, Oriole Lane Apartments. We have updated conceptual drawings and um, that are up for discussion. So come on forward. Uh, Good morning. Good morning. How's everyone? Uh, my name is Tyler Grody. I'm with uh, Osprey Property Company. Uh, we're one of the co-applicants, co-developers of, of this project. Um, we came before the design review board back in October at the last meeting, uh, received a handful of comments and input on our design for uh, this proposed community. And uh, we've uh, incorporated and responded to those comments uh, appropriately. Uh, a brief recap or uh, summary of the project. This is a proposed 120 unit apartment community, uh, includes a, a community center, 48 of the units will be uh, for families, uh, unrestricted to, to anybody who wants to live there. 72, and that will be in two buildings. Uh, a third building is a 72 unit age restricted uh, building. We uh, came before the Planning Commission last year and received a special exception uh, to restrict that to 55 and over. Uh, so 72 of the units will be for 55 and over. Um, with me, I have Michael Blake uh, with Mosley Architects, who's our architect of record, and Stacy Lagana, who uh, is our civil engineer, uh, and they can provide some input and uh, review of our what we've done to the site plan to uh, revise the layout to accommodate those those questions from last time, uh, as well as some of the design materials and and uh, facade and and things like that. So. Okay. Hand it over to Janine if she wants to do that and then let them. Yeah, I, I don't really have too much to say. They, um, you know, the purpose was to address the previous comments for the design re review board before they make an official submission for approval. Um, so they did revise the layout on the site as well as some of the color exterior uh, renderings uh, to try and address some of those comments. So from there, um, I'll turn it over if you have any specific questions or if you have you need more information on any, any of those things. First, we would like to thank you for addressing some of our concerns and uh, specifically changing the location of the parking lot um, from being on Oriole Lane to being a little more interior so that the buildings um, overlook the main street or at least the main street can see the building versus seeing another parking lot. So that was one of our biggest um, concerns. My question, one question is um, the streetscape along Oriole Lane um, are we going to do any sort of um, sidewalks or street trees or any sort of anything to help, you know, facilitate the walking paths that are in the community to bring them to the outside so that they could walk other places around that area? Do you know? I just I couldn't tell from the site plan. I don't see. A yeah, sidewalk. Real Lane actually has a sidewalk. Is there? And we are going to get some street trees. There. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. And I think the question I had, um, and I feel a little disoriented, so correct me if yeah. I'm not looking at it properly. The um, from the first color rendering that you have, those uh, that face is facing the green space. Are those are those? Um, the senior apartments. So I, I if you, you want me to speak. So the the area you have up there is actually Oriel Lane is in the far distance behind the building that's in the rear. Mm -hmm. That is the senior building. Okay. Okay. And then the um, the smaller building in the foreground is the community center, and then the two buildings on the left hand side are the family. The bottom, yeah. Okay. So that the um, they all, all the buildings kind of look out onto an open. Right. green area mm -hmm. i think our comments were mostly about 
old people yeah. um, just kind of sitting on their balconies yeah. and watching the kids play in the, yeah. the playground area. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I will say, I, I'm not sure you have the floor plans in your packet, but um, in addition to reorienting the senior building and kind of pulling the parking uh, away from the street, we um, uh, uh, put all the the amenity space towards the end of the building and and change the the entrance location so everything kind of faces that green so all the activity spaces can both be indoor and, and outdoor and communicate back and forth fairly easily yep there you go Uh, and again, my concern was just for seniors. I don't know if they'll have, you know, small pets allowed or whatever, but if grandma's walking her dog, you know, mm -hmm. to have to go a long way around. Yeah, I think we actually added some sidewalk from last time to try to make it a little bit more pedestrian mm -hmm. yeah. friendly. Another another one of my major, I don't know, if I lived on the ground floor of this building and just looking at the color renderings with all the HVAC units on the ground floor outside that one set of windows, um, like I just don't know if there's, we can put them elsewhere on the roof or something along that lines because I just, like looking at that, I'm like, I don't want to sit on my balcony and overlook 18 HVAC units, um, even though you've done a great job at hiding them yeah. from the street side. I just don't know about the, um, the people who have actually paid the living there wanting to right. see HVAC out their bedroom window. Yeah, so uh, you, this is a good view. Yeah. You can see we've aggregated them away from the outdoor balcony, so at least the outdoor spaces don't have them immediately mm -hmm. below. We have used this strategy in other uh, similar senior um uh, building communities and it has been successful um so you know we do have some uh, precedent for that just more of a curiosity um the split between 55 and you know restricted and unrestricted and this may be for director harrington more is is this um complex is it is it is, is that breakdown of of restricted to unrestricted? Is it is that hinging on the approval process? In other words, does it all have to be fifty five, or does it, it? And here's my concern: is that if you're fifty five or fifty seven, and you're in an apartment, and then the building next to you is twenty something, you know, at nine o'clock at night on a Friday is a little bit different um uh, for a 55 and a 25 year old and i've seen buildings where that presents challenges mm -hmm. it is it, it is in other words is the only is this approval process based on the fact that we have they have to have the 55 community because what i don't want to see happen is when it doesn't work out we're right back here and they say oh no we're, we're taking this all to 25 year olds no, so th that's they had to do the special exception approval in order to get 55 and older placed on the buildings. Um, so in our comprehensive plan, it does talk about providing uh, different types of housing and different types of environments for senior mm -hmm. uh, residents. Um, and it also talks about incorporating more mixed use um, to kind of gather more um you know different types of people into into areas. So that's part of where that comes from. And to be honest, a part of the age restricted is to not require school seat allocations. Um, it it has a reduced impact on water and sewer, and and there's several factors in that. Um, so economically, you know, it may make sense to have some of the the buildings as senior and some as market rate um, with regular um, occupancy to kind of offset some of those costs. And it does provide benefits all the way around. Um, I think that's also why they chose to separate them out into separate buildings. And there is a decent amount of space in between mm -hmm. the senior 
Um, so where the I'm going to steal your paper, um, but there is a, a significant difference. This building is the senior building and all of these over here are the regular. So there really shouldn't be too much of a you know, noise impact or, you know, really uh, impact on the senior living side. And uh, you don't want to have the seniors so far away from the parties that we can't get them. I'm going to say, <laughs> you may have some that are joining the, the 25 year olds, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, and if they do decide to take it back to regular, they could do that. We'd have to analyze school seats and, and take a look at that, but that would be an option. It's not like it's 55 or nothing. Yeah. And we just have to let us know when, you know, where we're at each weekend for the party. <laughs> <laughs> the green space is very good for that. No. David, have anything? Um, the only thing... Nothing besides his addressment was the HVAC units and um, you prefer that the building look like it front faces the streets, perhaps units facing the street. These are from um, another board member who wasn't able to be here today, our architect okay. that's on the board. Um, uh, question was about streetscape and sidewalks. Um, focus the mm -hmm. facade treatments on street elevation and entrance drop-off elevations. The side that faces the woods don't, doesn't need to be as detailed as the side that faces um, the street or primary facades. Mm -hmm. um, it's hybrid style. And that was all. Um, that was all he mainly commented on. Was that? I'm, I like the color of the building, at least from the different textures and colors that are there. Not an architect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think one of the comments was in the in the previous presentation, we had two different colors, one for the family buildings and right. one for the senior. And the comment was to make the community feel more cohesive would one color palette be preferred or better and that's what we're showing here and yeah. I, I think we agree and it kind of it shows out in the renderings yeah and i can tell the difference i i mean not that that's a standard look for 55 and older community but i can tell that there is a difference between the two buildings um but that they still look like they should be part of the same community so i appreciate that Obviously, any 55 and older are not walking up the steps to go home. <laughs> Especially after a party. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like the the one thing for clarification is the HVAC units. HVAC. Mm -hmm. okay. That's just my that's just my biggest concern is sitting in front of those ground level windows. Like I just personally, if I was to buy an apartment or a condo, I, that would be. I wouldn't want any of those units. I don't want to look out over an air conditioning yeah. unit. That was that's my that was my big thing. And that we are going to have sidewalks, so. And some trees. Yeah, and I think Mr. Hancock had the I mean, uh, yeah. Had the same David had. The same. Yes, David, it was HVAC was the yeah. big. Yeah, that that's a good view of the senior building. Yeah. Doesn't look too institutional. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, other than that, that's all the comment that I had was for mm -hmm. for that as well. So the consensus is we like everything that was revised the way it is. Just take another look at the HVAC units and see if there's anything that can be done with uh, with those. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Although where they the way they are hidden is very it's nice. very nice, but I would prefer not to see them at all. And hear, I mean, <clears throat> and hear the roar when they go on. Yeah. <clears throat> but otherwise, the reorienting the parking lot is much better than what it was, and the cohesive colors between all the buildings is mm. much better. 
because at least now coming down Oriole Lane, it looks like a community, not like a business mm -hmm. building mm -hmm. with ma major parking lot in the front. I agree. That's all that we yeah. have. Thank you so much. I appreciate you yep. taking our comments into consideration. Thank you. And look forward to seeing you with the final plan. Yeah. Great. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Next on the agenda is uh, planning department updates, project updates. So I don't, I don't think I attached anything to the agenda. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, we're a little short staff, so I'm working on my budget and uh, working on code updates and, and water appropriations and a lot of different things. So we've got uh, quite a bit going on. Um, we potentially will have a submission for Burger King. Um, I haven't quite figured out what they're proposing to do yet. I did get the initial email yesterday that, um, you know, or as generally this, the kind of update would be an admin design review board. Apparently what they're doing is going to warrant DRB. Okay. Um, I didn't uh, note that they, Burger King had come before, I don't remember what year it was, but they did come before the DRB before and it was denied. So again, it's something we could probably go back and find those old records and, and see what they're proposing. But uh, they said they're not proposing to change anything with the site layout or the drive through, but the building would be completely different. So that's something to. That's a, yeah, which I don't think would be bad because he now kind of looked out of place compared to everything that's around it. And I think that back in when this was originally proposed, I think the idea was that they wanted the house look. Mm -hmm. But now that, you know, Crane Highway has kind of mm -hmm. changed and things have kind of modernized, modernized a bit, uh, it might be time for a change. They do need renovations to the building. There's lots of yeah. things falling off. The, yeah, yeah. Through. <laughs> As a store that sits right next to it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's something that's going to be coming down the pipeline. Um, it's good to hear that there's a general um, willingness yeah. to see some change. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll relay that back to the applicant. Uh, so that should be coming forward. Um, we we are hitting a point with our development where we're running low on water allocations. So staff is, you know, of course, staff is working with Charles County to try to come up with a water water agreement. Um, I'm sorry I missed that conversation last <laughs> night, but um, must have been a good one. <laughs> I'm sure it was. Um, but we are having to kind of take a second look at things and how we're going to be moving forward with development in the short term. Um, to make sure that we're not over allocating our water appropriation. Um, but we have uh, Pine Grove is moving forward. They're going to be coming forward with their commercial uh, fairly soon. I have a meeting with them tomorrow about subdividing off the commercial land into condominium um, pads so that way they could start development there. They have some really neat ideas. It's TDX, so it wouldn't require DRB, um, but it's something that I'd be happy to bring so you guys could see yeah, what, yeah. what's yeah. going on. Absolutely. Um, and besides that, I don't really have anything that I can think of off the top of my head that's forthcoming um, for that. Uh, but yeah, we've just been really busy. We're working on our APFO, Adequate Public Facilities Ordinance. Uh, we're going to be looking at our subdivision ordinance, our zoning ordinance, our streets and sidewalks chapter, our water and sewer chapter, our health and sanitation chapter. Uh, so we have quite a bit coming down the pipeline um, as far as trying to make sure that we're updating our codes um, as much as we can. I know that uh, David did note in his email about the form-based code for the downtown core. That is something that I'm still researching to make sure that it's it's because it's not something that's been applied to like an, a small an area, area before, mm -hmm. but I think that there's a way to do it where we can try to um, promote redevelopment in that area. Uh, we're still working with the library um, at 208 Washington Avenue. Uh, we had come across some uh, ownership issues with North Maple Avenue. It turns out the town doesn't own that. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's technically owned by the uh, CSX. Oh, so oh. we were talking about, you know, because we want to connect North Maple Avenue up to the Talbot Street Talbot Extended. Um, so it was like, okay, how are we going to do this? Maybe the town is going to have to do a certain portion and the county does, you know, what they can do. Because mm -hmm. we essentially have a prescriptive easement because we've maintained it for so long. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so the town might have a better chance of doing some connections or things with that. So it's we're still working through that, but they are moving forward. Well, CSX is it's done, right? Is no, not they're yet. Still no, running it's, the train? It's not not decommissioned yet. Yeah, completely. Oh. They haven't turned it oh. off. Right. <laughs> okay. So um, you think I've heard a train the other day, and I don't. Maybe it was just imagining it. But they're very far and few. Yeah. Yeah. They're not very often. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was like I'm like I thought you heard. Be sure I just yeah. start a train and then yeah. I'm like well maybe. I used to have to hold on in yes. my office when the train went by yeah 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 they're very um very limited now uh Magnolia Gardens uh you'll you'll notice that they've cleared the site off of Washington Avenue it's quick uh, okay <laughs> there are some some other things happening with that but they are uh proceeding forward um and other than that unless you have a specific question about anything that's going on that's a brief update for you Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Council updates. Anything fun? No. <laughs> <laughs> welcome oh, to the board. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. No. Sorry, my microphone was off. Um, <laughs> I emailed um, Kelly about making sure that just uh, my name or email is added to any any future emails that go back and forth, so that I can kind of stay in the loop of what's what's going on for uh, design review board. Yeah, that'll be me. I will make sure to add you to the meeting agenda. I think I added you to the meeting agenda, mm -hmm. and didn't I? Okay, no, I will make sure to. Which is fine, but. I'll, I'll make sure to add you. I was not aware that um, that had switched over, so I'll make sure that you're on that. You'll get that today. And then I always send my emails out from that invitation so everyone is copied on that. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much and welcome. Mm -hmm. All right, that is everything for today. I'll I'll motion to adjourn the session of the Design Review Board meeting. Oh, thank you. <laughs> all those in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> and all those opposed, <laughs> nobody. Thank you. This meeting has been adjourned. <laughs>